Why does it take three days to send money across the world when I can send an email in three seconds? Think about that. If I can text a friend in Japan instantly, why can't I send money the same way? Why do we still accept waiting days, paying outrageous fees, and relying on middlemen just to move our own money? And that's the broken system that XRP was designed to fix. And it's why today, for the very first time outside of Bitcoin, I'm breaking down XRP in plain English. And a quick side note, if you're tired of hype and want crypto explained in a way you can actually understand, hit that subscribe button right now. This channel is about education, not confusion. Now, full disclosure, XRP is my number two allocation behind Bitcoin. I believe in it because of utility, not hype. And today, I'm going to tell you what XRP is, why it matters, how it almost died, and why it could become one of the most important digital assets of the future. And by the end, you'll know exactly where XRP fits in, why I believe in it, and why people call it one of crypto's greatest comeback stories. Before we talk XRP, let's look at the system that we have now. When you send money overseas, it doesn't go directly from you to your friend. It hops through banks, and each bank charges a fee. Each bank takes time, and that's why an international wire takes three to five days. It's like mailing a letter to three post offices instead of sending an email directly. And who pays the price? Everyday people like you and I. If you're sending remittances to family overseas, you lose hours of waiting at five to 10% of your money in fees. That's billions of dollars wasted every year. This is the broken system that XRP was built to replace. Now let's get to XRP. Ripple is the company and XRP is the digital asset. Created in 2012, XRP was designed to move money like information moves across the internet instantly and cheaply. But here's the difference. Transactions, they take three to five seconds. It costs less than a penny and XRP Ledger handles about 1,500 transactions per second. Compare that to Bitcoin 7 and Ethereum's 30. Think of it like this. Bitcoin is a digital gold vault Ethereum is a decentralized app store, and XRP is a payment highway. And Ripple, the company, built products like RippleNet and on-demand liquidity so that banks and businesses can use XRP instead of holding foreign currency all over the world. But XRP isn't just for banks. If I send money abroad or move crypto between exchanges, XRP is one of the fastest and cheapest ways to do it. XRP is the bridge currency for the digital age. Now let's make it real. A mom in California sending $200 to family in Mexico. With Western Union, she waits days and pays $20 in fees. But with XRP, the money lands in seconds and costs fractions of a cent. Or a trader moving crypto between exchanges. Instead of waiting hours for confirmations, XRP settles instantly. Even online payments. Imagine a future where you pay for something and it clears instantly anywhere in the world. And this is why XRP matters. It's not hype. It's real people like you and I solving real money problems. XRP isn't just about individuals. Big players are already using it. RippleNet connects banks across more than 50 countries. In Asia, Ripple's partner SBI Holdings is pioneering XRP adoption in Japan. In the Philippines, remittances powered by XRP are already running. On-demand liquidity lets banks move millions instantly without prefunding foreign accounts. That means less locked up capital, less risk, and less cost. This is where XRP starts scaling beyond retail into global finance itself. In 2017, XRP went from pennies to over $3.40. And for a moment, it almost opened to Ethereum for the number two spot in the cryptocurrency market cap. This wasn't just speculation. XRP was fast, scalable, and built for finance. It was a star until the SEC came knocking. In December 2020, the SEC sued Ripple and the claim that selling XRP was like selling a stock an unregistered security. Imagine if the government told you that buying a concert ticket was the same as buying stock in the band. That's basically what they said about XRP. And the fallout was huge. Exchanges delisted XRP, the price crashed about 60%, and confidence collapsed. And for three years, XRP lived in limbo. But here's the part most people don't talk about. The lawsuit didn't happen in the vacuum. The Biden administration was openly anti-crypto, his SEC was protecting the big banks, the same institutions 
threatened by digital assets like XRP. Crypto wasn't seen as innovation, it was seen as a threat. Then came a shift. The Trump administration returned, bringing new SEC leadership. This Trump SEC is pro-innovation and openly supportive of cryptocurrency as part of the financial future. Think about that contrast. Under Biden, crypto was choked. Under Trump, the door is open. And for XRP, that is night and day. And in July 2023, Judge Annalisa Torres ruled XRP sold on exchanges is not a security. Retail investors were cleared. Ripple paid a fine for institutional sales, but the cloud was lifted. And this was more than a legal win. It was a survival story and a turning point. Now, instead of fighting uphill against hostile regulators, XRP is moving forward in an environment where innovation is supported, not strangled. That's why I say XRP didn't just survive. It set the stage for one of the biggest comebacks in crypto. Now, let's compare the big three. Bitcoin is digital gold, the safest vault in the world. Ethereum is a decentralized computer. It runs apps and the T's and DeFi. And XRP is the payment highway. It moves money like an email, fast and cheap. These aren't competitors, they're teammates. And together, they are reshaping money. Now let's bust some myth. Myth one, XRP is centralized. That is wrong. Ripple controls less than 5% of validators. Myth number two, XRP has no utility. That's false. It's powering payments today. Myth three, XRP is just a bank coin. That's not true. Fast money benefits everyone. This is where it gets exciting. By November 2025, Twift, the system connecting more than 11,000 banks worldwide, will be fully ISO 222 compliant. Ripple is already ISO 222 ready. Now, if you're brand new, let me break that down. ISO 222 is basically a universal language for money. And right now, different banks and countries use different formats for payment messages, which causes delays and errors. ISO 222 standardizes everything so banks worldwide can talk to each other in the same format, instantly and accurately. And here's where XRP ties in. Ripple's technology is already built to work with ISO 222. That means as global base switch to this new standard, XRP is perfectly positioned to plug right into the new financial rails, faster and cheaper than the old system. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse even said the XRP ledger could capture up to 14% of SWIFT's global liquidity within five years. And SWIFT processes about $150 trillion annually. 14% of that is about $21 trillion. Even capturing 1% could push XRP into the $30 to $40 range. And that 14% analysts project $100 to $500 per coin. Other estimates suggest $40 that XRP captures a slice of the $194 trillion global payments market and about $59 or more if adoption expands across remittances and central bank digital currency. These are trillion dollar flow. This isn't me, Mac. This is real potential. If this vision excites you, hit that like button right now. It shows me that you want more deep dives like this. Let's zoom out. Money is changing. Governments are testing central bank digital currencies. Businesses are moving away from wires and checks. And consumers expect instant everything. XRP is part of that shift. Faster, cheaper, and global. We're talking about a future where money moves like information, where a payment clears as fast as sending a text. XRP isn't the whole picture, but it's a key piece of the puzzle. Of course, XRP isn't without risks. It faces competition from Stellar, from Swift's upgrades, from central big digital currencies. Regulation outside the US is still uncertain, and crypto markets are volatile. But after surviving the SEC lawsuit, XRP has proven resilience, and that matters. So let's wrap it up. XRP is in hype. It's not a need. It's a purpose-built digital asset designed to fix something that is broken. It survived one of the toughest legal battles in crypto history. It came out stronger, and now, as global finance upgrades, it has the clarity and infrastructure to scale. That's why XRP is my number two allocation behind Bitcoin. Not because it's trendy, but because it's resilient, useful, and positioned for the future. What do you think? Does XRP have what it takes to become the backbone of global liquidity? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I read them all. And if you found this breakdown valuable, 
hit that subscribe button. This is only the beginning. Let's keep building smarter crypto conversations together.